uh, really glad to have this opportunity to introduce uh, some of our work on digital horticultural system. Uh, yeah, I will first give a um, overview of the institute uh, initiative on this. Then I will introduce some detailed models that we've done before. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge that this is not work done by my, myself. So it's done a, a very large group uh, with probably 100 people involved. Um, my colleague John Mosen and also uh, Jack Perkins, they are here as well. So I would like to first start with a quote uh, uh, by Jane uh, Hirschfield. She summarized the philosophy of uh, uh, Zen like in seven words. So everything is connected, it's like, and everything is changing, and we need to pay attention to the changes. This uh, makes me think about the work we are doing. I found this is very well reflected uh, with the work we are doing on digital horticultural system. So in this system, we have six uh, main component. First, first we have the physical system uh, component, then we have the sensing system, we have the data platform and the virtual system, and then the decision framework and the effector system to acting on the um, physical system. So in this work, we will treat like the physical system and the virtual system as a very connected uh, um, system, and everything is connected. And then we acknowledge that everything is changing and we will pay close attention to the change of the system uh, through the sensing system. Uh, then, uh, yeah. then we will build the uh, data platform to store all the information. So uh, based on the complexity of the system and the work we are doing, we can divide this uh, digital horticulture system into three uh, phases, maybe. So, can put. so in the first phase, we are mainly uh, doing, working on the digital model that we are simulating the physical system as a virtual system. In this case, uh, there's no direct communication between the virtual and the physical system. Um, then we are adding uh, the sensor, uh, using the sensor system to feed in the real-time data from the physical system to the virtual system. And we can call this as a digital shadow because they are mainly mimic the uh, physical system. Then finally, we are we are deploy the decision framework and the effect system like the robot in field. Um, then we will can complete the digital tooling as a system. Um, so, so yeah. So our vision was to build and validate a multi-scale digital twin platform that will allow us to holistically and to simulate, interrogate, and design, and ultimately prescribe and control the structure and the performance uh, of the perennial horticultural uh, system and across the value chain, um, including post-harvest and uh, to the market as well. So initially, we will use the 2D plan and cordon system using Lawyer Gala, uh, Apple, and M9 rootstock. Yeah. So um, this uh, plan and cordon system was a um, kind of innovation of our um, fruit physiology uh, group. So first they used uh, the advantage of the natural growth habit of the tree that grows vertically. So you can see the system, uh, is, uh, the, all the cordons are vertically positioned and we keep the top of the shoot that continually grows. We don't remove it. So this can help us re um, suppress the lateral branching of the shoot. And you can, um, then we, based on the artificial spur extinction um, principle, we control the number of spurs on the, each upright, so the yield is well controlled. Um, then we reduce the low distance between the plants uh, to two meters, and the plant distance is increased to three meters. And you can see that from the picture in the right corner, um, you can see a fruit wall of the, yeah, uh, of this apple production system. So the big advantage of this system is that uh, it has a very large yield advantage. 
So it can increase the current yield uh, of 35 tons per hectare to about 100 tons um, per hectare. And for some later harvesting varieties, it can reach even reach 150 tons per hectare. And uh, furthermore, it can uh, even increase the uniform of the fruit quality. Uh, our study, uh, field study suggests that you can increase the rate of the uh, first grade rate uh, from 65% to 85% uh, uh, first gr uh, grade. So that increases the farmer's income a lot. So uh, because this system is, uh, we have been tested for about eight years, um, but there are still many things that the complex uh, biological interactions within the tree we are not uh, fully understand, and we would like to use in the digital um, model to help us and to optimize the system furthermore. Um, so we start a journey on the building an Apple digital twin. So currently we have like uh, um, five programs. Each program with about two million uh, New Zealand dollar um, but annual budget, uh, and we have about hundred staffs that are involved in the overall work. Uh, so we have two uh, modeling uh, programs: one uh, focus on the apple tree model, and one focus on the orchard ecosystem. Uh, and we have the smart sensing and the imaging system working with the field of phenotyping. <laughs> yeah, it's different from the um, glass house and the growth chambers. And we have the data architecture, analytic and visualization um, plat um, program that are working on building the data um, platform and the modeling platform for, yeah, for the simulation. And we have the, another program focused on the stakeholder values and the metrics. So um, together, those five programs are working on one objective. We would like to develop the um, called minimally functional digital twin first. So we frame the question as, can we grow loyal gala um, planar cordon um, FOP system in silico such that the virtual tree and the fruit will respond to, can respond to management actions like tree architecture, crop loads, environment, and specify the abiotic and biotic challenges like pests and disease in the way that mimic the real orchard and supply chain uh, system and are testable. So I will give a brief introduction of each program. Um, so first program is the data architecture, analytics, and visualization. It has four projects. So the first project uh, led by Jack uh, Perkins. Uh, he's also here today. So this project focuses on uh, defining the data standards and flexible and standardized uh, data ontology for interoperability. So we will have the data ontology to store all pieces of the data in a tree structure. And the uh, second project is theory and tools for model integration. So this project focuses on developing a common tools for model integration because we have quite many different type of model. So we need to develop, uh, track the assumptions, analyze whether they can uh, be integrated uh, nicely. The third project is the system build. So this one is the, uh, the, how to say, the hard horse. It's basically building the, directly the data um, platform and modeling platform that we can use to uh, serve as a, a simulation engine and to conducting all the actual um, calculations and simulation. So the fourth project is interactive visualization. So this one we will try to build the 3D uh, interactive visualization uh, user interface of the growth uh, uh, trees and also to design a 3D orchard designer that we can play with the design of the orchard and uh, to run the simulation. So one highlight of this uh, program is the, probably the system build, the data platform and the system we are building. So the draft idea is that we have the, uh, we, um, is that we have the configuration user interface that we can configure different models and select uh, the model combinations that we want to run. And after configuration, then we can call the model to run. And uh, each model will output their um, like, uh, the stat variables 
to the called the simulation cache, which is basically the physical memory storage. And then each model has the API or functions that you can uh, call to access other models uh, and state variables. And then, uh, then we have a lot of, uh, we have a long-term storage as well uh, for further explorations. Uh, we are closing to having a prototype soon, maybe in a year time. <laughs> So the second uh, program is the smart sensing and imaging system. So it has four projects. The first one is instrumented tree and orchard. So this one is focusing on automatic tree, uh, automating the tree and the environmental measurements, including tree architecture and uh, uh, sap flow and stem diameter. Those things. And the second uh, project is the sensor interpretation. It's basically building the data, analyzing pipelines to extracting all the meaningful information from the, uh, from the sensor, the uh, instrument tree and orchard. So the third project is a physical sensing system. So this one is uh, actually um, making some innovation in the physical sensing method. It's mainly using the photonics uh, uh, to measure the fluid quality as well as the light spectrum distribution in the canopy. Uh, the fourth project is uh, the molecular and volatile sensing by trying to develop some novel sensors for understanding plant responses to environment and management. Uh, so one highlight of this program is that we have uh, just deployed the, um, the imaging rig in field, uh, not this one. This is the, when we are testing in the, <laughs> in the, um, in the backyard. Uh, now we have deployed in the actual orchard. Uh, we currently, this uh, sensing imaging rig uh, has like capacity to have the high resolution RGB image and it can do the stereo of pair. It has two uh, imaging head from both sides. Uh, and you can we have a time of flight camera as well to, um, to create the 3D point cloud. We have the fourth uh, um, yeah, node that we probably will put the imaging, a uh, thermal imaging camera there. Um, currently, we are working with our collaborators to develop uh, the pipeline to um, do the organ segmentation and uh, to construct the tree architecture. Uh, we are also developing, um, deploying the Bluetooth sensor mesh in the orchard. This is mainly to record the humidity and temperature in different positions of the orchard. Um, the third project program is uh, called Simulating Orchard uh, Ecosystems. So this has five projects. The first one is to understanding the human and natural capital from an <coughs> indigenous uh, um, people uh, perspective. And the second project is the plant community. This one trying to understand how the mixed plant community influence the ecosystem service, like the understories. And the third project is our microecology so it's trying to describe the diversity, abundance, and the functionality of the microbes that affects the disease progression. And the fourth project is the law of invertebrates in orchard systems. We try to calibrate the interactions between the apple trees and uh, uh, invertebrates within orchard, like the pollinators and others. And the fifth one is to build in the soil and uh, um, bio biochemical cycles. We try to model in the soil process of the orchard system and try, then we can couple the soil model with the tree model that we're developing. So one highlight of this uh, program is probably the system approach that we are um, talking. Um, yeah, we are trying to develop probably one um, pollinator uh, model and one microbial model and at least one pest and disease model and understory and soil model to study the system side um, progress processes. Um, the fourth one is stakeholder values and matrix. So this one uh, has three projects. First, uh, focus on the well-being economies. We try to investigate in an overarching framework that encompasses the, encompassing the diverse stakeholder values and behaviors. And second is the consumer's uh, perspective on the fruit fresh, freshness. So we try to identify the indicators that can communicate with the uh, sustainable global uh, practices to the future consumers. 
and the third one is the, the environmental metrics. It's really focusing on the integrative metrics that are encompassing uh, water, nutrient, and climate uh, um, and biodiversity in uh, metrics that we can use for guiding other programs that work. Like if we identify this is the direction that the future consumer thinks, then we probably yeah uh, twisted and uh, towards that direction. Um, yeah, I think the highlight for this program will be that it's the the, op uh, the system approach is taking from the, uh, the social pillar, the environment pillar, and economic pillar that uh, yeah forming a s integrated view on sustainable agriculture and for guiding other programs. So the fifth uh, program is uh, modeling of uh, modeling high performance apple system. Um, I'm co-leading this program with Geo Stanley. So we have five projects within this pro uh, program. The first one is building the apple tree model. It's like the, so we try to do build, develop a functional structure um, apple tree models. And we also try to integrate uh, um, our other fundings from the, in the remaining four projects. So the second one is uh, tree structure and function. It's trying to quantify the tree architecture and organ growth over an, an annual growth cycle, cycle. So we have started a bit simple because it's a perennial crop. Uh, we have, at the start, we are just focusing on one growing season first. And the third one is energy capture utilization and distribution. So in this project, we try to cal calculate the light inception and also uh, leaf photosynthesis. And finally, the whole tree um, uh, photosynthesis and trying to identify the sourcing relationships and carbon allocation. And the fourth project is uh, the root system physiology and modeling. So in this project, we are do some experiment to understand the root architecture, growth, and function. And the fifth one is the, really the fruit development, quality, and storage performance. Try to predict the fruit and quality development on the tree and in uh, storage. Um, so the vision of this program was to combine new physiological understanding of the function and uh, uh, of the soil chart and the food quality availability with monitoring uh, control technologies. So we want to further improve the yield and the food quality in our chart and during storage and also trying to improve the energy and use efficiency and to reduce the waste of the fruit and the inputs. So Overall, I think this program, you can view this work as two, uh, two major parts. The first of part focusing on the physio uh, physiological processes uh, that of the tree and the, in, and the environment. And the second one is the, uh, actually mainly the model infrastructure that we are um, developing. So yeah, I will probably go through some of this. Uh, uh, yeah, so just give you some a snapshot of the, the work we are doing. So first one, we are trying to um, measuring the multi-tree graph uh, on the, yeah. So at, at the start, we're doing manual measurement on the tree <laughs> architecture. Uh, we are waiting for the imaging system uh, to be ready. And, but we then we can um, compare in the results between the, those two measurements. Uh, yeah, you can see we have a, we have a did very detailed digitization of the, this uh, tall four meters tree. Um, yeah, and we can put that into the, yeah, we are ready to import the tree architecture into the model now. Uh, secondly, we are now we, last year we are measuring the light and energy distribution within the canopy. Uh, we also did some uh, measurement of the light spectrum as well. And so the third, we have to make a very nice plans for the root, uh, yeah, for the root uh, experiment plans. So we have um, plans to at least uh, excavate a few trees to see the actual root distribution and architecture. We we'll install the uh, rhizotron, mini rhizotron in field and monitoring the root growth. And we will also do some aeroponic uh, um, yeah, growing of the apples in the growth chamber. 
and we have to do some port experiment to study the water uptake. And we also have a very nice facility for studying the root nitrogen uptake. In the upper right, you can see the we have different containers that we can um, control the nitrogen concentration of the fertilization and then study the um, root nitrogen um, uptake. And we also have a bit thinking about the root excavate quantification as well. Uh, by the way, this is the visualization of the current tree model and a 3D root model. We have uh, coupled in the model. I'll probably uh, talk on that later. Um, for the fruit development part, we, last year we already uh, tested about like 17 different uh, uh, trait assessment methods, both destructive and non-destructive, um, and in different uh, training system as well. Uh, we are going to use the the fruit model developed by the INRA and E um, Avenuen group team, led by Amicia Zinat, to simulate the apple uh, fruit growth. So, for the model infrastructure, <laughs> yeah, currently, last year we are mainly focusing on developing lots of uh, external tools uh, uh, together with the model. So, we have developed a synthetic root and shoot generator. Uh, just quickly show you what does that means. So this tool is mainly for facilitating the simulation, tree simulation that we are going to do. Uh, so the shoot uh, uh, generator was done in MATLAB. Uh, in this way, it can we can quickly prototype the uh, the tree architecture of growth. And currently, we are trying to importing the architecture we have measured into the uh, this uh, generator and we're developing some interactive tools that we can change the architecture in the MATLAB, this generator, then we can export the different architecture again. So this will uh, speed up our simulation for different architectures. So we also developed a, a synthetic root generator because you can imagine the apple tree, that, uh, our apple orchard is currently that is, uh, seven years old. You can imagine how big the root system could be. So we don't want to simulate him from the seed to the, to the seven year old because it uh, tends to create lots of errors. So we developed uh, using the Python code and just using some simple parameters, uh, like the number of uh, um, root at the outer angle and inner angle, and, uh, and a bit some of the root angle controls and branching. Then we, um, our code can um, very f generate in the root architecture very flexibly. Uh, we can even, we can even say that we f we just want to sample. We have more root in this region, and our code can optimize the generator to generate more uh, root in certain specific region to match the field, uh, probably field sampling that we have some data before. Uh, so the third tool is like the differential tool that uh, we are uh, developing. This is uh, mainly for, because we want to uh, simulate the real-time data from our imaging system. So uh, the diff tool is uh, mainly to compare in the, maybe the point, uh, 3D point clouds in the virtual model and, uh, and with the, uh, the measured tree 3D point cloud in field. So, we may pr uh, directly compare those two point clouds or comparing the topography or graph of the, those two data. Uh, yeah, we also developed the uh, auto documentation for the model so we can generate nice documentations. Uh, we, are, uh, we developed the, the input tool for importing uh, uh, the architecture data because you, you can imagine if we, uh, we simulate the root uh, as a very small segment, <laughs> it will have thousands of segments to be imported into the model and to keep the topology of the architecture as well. Uh, we developed the parameter optimization pipeline in Python, so the, the code can uh, use in the Bayesian um, approach. So the code can uh, like launch the main model as a web server, and the optimization pipeline can communicate with the model but just by calling this function and returning the simulation results. Uh, we are currently developing the model validation testing pipelines, 
and we also employ uh, the initial machine learning flow for analyzing the model results and developing model surrogate. So the, for the core tree model development card, we're also doing quite many work on that. I was thinking we should uh, have a develop a more new model framework uh, that we can configure the model more flexibly. Just to, just to show you, uh, my aim was to like uh, having to configure the model like this using a tree a structure a text file. And in this way, we can like uh, have just uh, have one generic organ class, and we can use uh, independent dependency injections to add a different functionality to the generic organ class, and then we can. Uh, configure the model in the user interface, just to drop, drop, uh, drop out different functionalities, and we can run the configuration class to, com uh, yeah, to compose the model that we want. Uh, yeah. So, can, and we also try integrating the 3D model to import, improve its uh, water and nitrogen calculation. Yeah, and we are working on the dynamic shoot growth and an uh, um, apple model as well. So just quickly show you the uh, shoot uh, development one we are using. So main idea was to first import the architecture uh, from the measurement and into the um, our go imp model. Um, then we are based on probably the shoot type and the phenology and uh, um, and the carbon and the water status of the plant to simulate the dynamic uh, uh, tree growth. Uh, the similar idea will probably apply to uh, will apply to the root model as well. We'll import the architecture that generated by the root generator um, into the main model. Then we based on the branching rules or the interbranching distance, uh, then to simulate the root development. Uh, so finally, all of those <laughs> findings uh, of the previous development will be incorporated into the. Uh, yeah, probably into a previous model that I have uh, developed. So in this uh, framework, um, so this is the previous uh, um, graphite model that I've developed before. So in this model, we have uh, um, five big modules. First is the radiation module, which can simulate using ray tracing method to simulate the light interception of each leaf. Um, and then the leaf ex Gas exchange module, with, uh, the, which is uh, adapted from uh, Xingyu Ying's uh, model, it simulates uh, the potential photosynthesis and uh, leaf transpiration and leaf temperature under no water stress uh, conditions. Uh, then this leaf uh, simulated the potential transpiration was input into the water flux module, which is adapted from Takadu Davis's uh, model. I'm very glad Takadu is here today. <laughs> Uh, so this model will uh, account the soil water uh, potential effect on the, um, then simulate the water transport from soil to root, uh, then to the leaf, and then uh, we will calculate the new leaf water potential and calculate in the gas exchange again based on the leaf water potential and the new stomata conductance. Uh, so in finally, the, when we have the actual photosynthesis, that we will calculate the carbon um, allocation uh, both based on the carbon storage in the root and the trunk as well, and then simulate the um, carbon allocation between each organs. Um, from the water flux module and the carbon flux module, we can solve in the, uh, add, uh, get the xylem water potential and the phloem sugar concentration, and this will be input into the value growth model of uh, developed by uh, Michel Zinad. So we have we did quite many um, calibration for this uh, graph model before. We calibrated the model with the whole um, uh, with a whole plant transpiration and photosynthesis, uh, and you can see that the model can well capture. Uh, we had two different treatments. One treatment has like 12 leaves uh, per shoot, and another treatment has like three leaves per shoot, uh, and both are in the uh, whole in the or the whole plant for the synthesis measurement chamber. <laughs> uh, and you can see that uh, the model can capture the uh, transpiration rate at uh, uh, per, uh, say per leaf level. 
Uh, we also validated the model at um, simulation of the uh, whole plant flux to uh, validate the model with a, a pot experiment with a drying cycle where we first uh, fully irrigated the pot, then we stopped the irrigation for about a week. We followed the water potential over time and also the photosynthesis and, and the soil water potential. And we can see the model can capture the decrease of the transpiration over time. Uh, quite uh, fit well with the uh, observed uh, data. Um, after the calibration, then we did uh, the simulation for different uh, uh, leaf number pursuit treatment, and we can see that the model can capture the difference uh, in the, the carbon status of the plant and cap simulate the dry weight of the fruit um, and fresh weight of the uh, grape and also <laughs> the sugar concentration quite well. Um, yeah, because we are very interested in the fruit quality variability, probably within the plant. So last two years ago, so I started to incorporating a carbon transport model for simulating the carbon uh, concentration gradient within the tree. Uh, this model was originated, developed by Ala Silasinova and Jim Hanhan. Um, the, the novelty of this uh, um, carbon transport model is that it's combining it uh, called a numerical approach, uh, computational approach in, in the model um, and with a numerical analytical solution and, and uh, originally that compared the numeric, uh, um, numerical solution in the model and the analytical solution uh, by other authors and they found this very, uh, matches very well. Uh, just quickly mention that this model uh, simulating the carbon flow in the between different nodes, internodes of the shoot, uh, based on a carbon um, potential. Then the carbon potential is the uh, basically it's calculated as the, the the square of the carbon concentration of that um, position divided by two, and by this uh, node, a uh, new form you can how to say have the linear uh, in the integration of the equations. Mm, a bit common. So, we've, uh, so I incorporated this model with my graphite model and I uh, validated uh, the model performance with a very detailed experiment setup where we have like a treatment with uh, no leaf at all. We remove all the leaf and, uh, and uh, track the fruit uh, development and fruit concentration over weekly, and we also do weekly sampling of uh, the trunk uh, uh, biomass and root biomass of the pot. We also have, have other two treatments with 25 leaves per vine and 100 leaves per vine. Um, yeah, and I simulated the, yeah, the fruit growth on a different uh, treatment with zero leaf 25 leaf and 100 leaf. Um, so after calibration, I just uh, input the initial condition and we can simulate the fruit development um, quite well, as well the non-structural carbon concentration in the root. So just to show you some scenario simulation that we can do with this model. Uh, so I did one um, extreme, uh, how say, kind of extreme conditions that we just have put one shoot at the end of the cordon and we have five bunches around the cordon. And the um, idea is that whether to see whether the model can capture the carbon concentration gradient around the cordon. Um, yeah, and, and we did capture the uh, gradient around the shoot. You can see that from position one to five, we can see that a nice difference um, our gradient along in during the day where the position one has the highest carbon concentration and position five has the lowest carbon concentration and at the daytime. Then interesting we can see that at the night time position five will have the highest carbon concentration and position one will have the lowest. That's where because that the position five is close to the trunk and the root which is a carbon hydrate reserve and they will provide more carbon to the fruit uh, at the night time. Yeah, and uh, although the difference at 
certain day, uh, interval is small, but you can see that over time, the bunches will have uh, quite a, some difference in the bunch biomass if you give enough uh, uh, base. Uh, so just to briefly mention, uh, beside the functional structure model, yeah, we're also doing uh, quite a lot of work on the EPSIM uh, model. So EPSIM is developed uh, by CSIRO and uh, Queensland University. Uh, but in plant and food research New Zealand, we also have a big group working on EPSIM development. So I also developed one uh, graphite model in the um, EPSIM framework. And you can see it's easy to configure the model there. And we have the strip light inception uh, model to capture the uh, light inception by the strip uh, lows because it's heterogeneous canopy. Uh, and I incorporated a statistical uh, bunch, um, prediction model for bunch number, belly number, and we can simulate the, uh, the, the biomass of different uh, components for drift treatment very well. So finally, I just would like to give an advertisement for the functional structural plant model 2023 in Berlin uh, next year. If you are interested, please join this conference. So thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for the very uh, complete talk ever on what you have achieved earlier on your uh, previous project and also the one I do part on the, on the Apple, which is connected. So we have time for questions. Uh, hi, uh, I had a question. When you showed the example of your berry uh, simulation, I saw that the stems were actually growing downwards, which is can happen in nature, but it's not so usual. Do you account that in your model, or was it just because it uses random angle for the stem? And Do you another, mean? Uh, well, yeah, maybe first this question. You mean the, for the pot experiment? Uh, yes, this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a. Because it, this is called a bush the vine, <laughs> because you are uh, growing the vine in the pot, so it yeah it's a uh, it's actually com very compatible with the actual experiment. Okay, so you actually see the downwards growth, so you don't have uh, the stems growing towards the sunlight. Yeah, this is a kind of bush. So if you have some yeah gravity to falling down, well although, although it tried growing up. <laughs> Okay, so you account for that basically. Yeah. Okay, and the uh, second question would be, I guess you work mostly with cloning crops or apple and vines, uh, but when you have different genetics, uh, are you also planning to, for example, add QTL to other genetic markers in your future function models to account for genetic diversity between cultivars? Yes, we, we are thinking in future we are incorporating some genotypic variability but mainly through the kind of probably model parameters to yeah to link some genetic variability on the model parameters. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Other questions? So please stand. I think thanks a lot. Um, Can you stand, uh, sure. <laughs> Up. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned that uh, you compare your model with the APSIM, but uh, the, the levels of abstraction are quite different in APSIM and in uh, FSPM model like yours, because APSIM has no explicit leave, no explicit flux, etc. So how can you compare an FSPM that in which everything is explicit with the APSIM that is much more abstract? Yeah, we compare probably more on the summarized level. Like if you can, you can compare the uh, total amount of light inception of the canopy, uh, and probably also the dry matter of the different components of the organ. So more on a summarized level rather than individual organ level. A similar question on the uh, carbon uh, model. Uh, for if you transpose it to uh, your apple tree, so what would be the input from the microscopic uh, 
uh, measurement or how fine should the measurement uh, be so as to have a good fit between the, the prediction of the model and the, mm. and the digital twin? Yeah, currently um, we are I mean, just uh, simulating the like count of the carbon concentration of the <laughs> like for the chunk. So our measurement is probably just uh, like uh, have like uh, m uh, maybe few samples each year of the season, just uh, having carbon some juice in the in the chunk to to make the comparison between the simulation and the tr tree. So uh, I have some, <laughs> some more. Uh, so what about the um, uh, flux of data? How heavy is it to, uh, to, to do the automation of uh, moving from the uh, in-field data uh, that you measurement that you will do an adjustment of the, of the model? Because uh, uh, shaping a graph to a graph can be a NP uh, hard uh, problem from a computer science point of view, very heavy. So how do you solve this? How, how long is typically the adjustment of the measurement to fit the, the, the model? Yeah. Is it a bottleneck somehow, or is it something that is uh, a few yeah. seconds on your computers? Yeah. You mean the amount of data yeah. for model uh, yes, exactly, validation? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think currently we are still working in progress. Uh, so I, I guess we we try to uh, set up the automatic uh, pipeline from the field, uh, like uh, image analysis. Then we can extract uh, probably the leaf area and also leaf position and a fruit number from the ana uh, image analysis. Then we can import into that model. So. So I think the main bottleneck is the data analysis of the image analysis, mm. not, not, uh, not importing to the model. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any question from uh, in Wageningen? People are using also GrowImp as a part of their digital twin. Is there any question? I'm looking at Rick, but maybe of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> we still have time, yeah? Yes. You can stand. Uh, I don't, I don't feel forced at all to ask a question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, there was one thing I was wondering. There was one slide, actually, that was not so long in your uh, presentation where you were calibrating for sunlight. Um, I think 10 slides back. <laughs> and I was wondering, how do you actually do that calibration? Sunlight? Uh, you were tuning your model, or you were, there was uh, one reference of, of sun and water, and yeah, I'll, I'll you just go back and I'll tell you where to stop. There, this one. Yeah, this one. calibrated for light interception, photosynthesis, resource allocation. I was wondering, how do you actually do this calibration? Oh, yeah. So we have, we you see, we have the field uh, light measurement in field at different levels, uh, positions of the canopy, uh, and we also have the some photosynthesis measurement, uh, and probably also. We are destructive few trees at the end of the season to measure the carbon uh, allocation. So we will use this, uh, yeah, probably still very labor intensive data set to, <laughs> to calibrate the model. Yeah, so it is work in progress then? Yeah, yeah, yeah this is a work in progress. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. if no more questions, uh, uh, I know that so since your pro project is starting somehow, I know you, somehow you are open to collaborations also if people want to, to, to connect. That was the point, I think, to, that you presented the different work package because it's very broad, including uh, uh, measurement physiology, different use cases, and so on. So they can maybe contact you if they are interested in more collaboration. Yeah. Uh, as you are also here, uh, you stay here for the, uh, for the conference and for a couple of days here again uh, in, uh, in Europe. So please. Uh, Contact Kunki uh, if you want to have more interaction with all the group in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very yeah. much. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah thanks, David.